I was that kid in school who couldn't play sports. I was always picked last. I was hopeless at everything. I couldn't jump, I couldn't run, I couldn't play netball, I couldn't play hockey. I really wanted them to have that self-confidence that being quite good at sport um, allows you. So I, so I forced my daughter to play football from the time she was about four or five. And, um, and out of her experiences playing football and then my son's experiences playing rugby and cricket and then she did taekwondo and suddenly I realized that I was such a nutty parent forcing my child to play all these sports that there must be a story there, there must be a funny story about a silly parent who's convinced their child can be great if only they can find the right sport. So it's basically Marcus's adventures as he goes from sport to sport because his father keeps picking the next one, convinced that's the one that's going to turn Marcus into a you know, global star. It's been a mixed reaction because my original series was the Sasha series which is based on my daughter and I wrote that series of picture books when she was about the same age as the girl in the book and actually she was very embarrassed because those books sold very well so all her kindergarten friends would know that she was Sasha from the book that they had at Howell. Um But as they've grown older, I think they've become much more reconciled. Mm -hmm. you know, they like the idea that they feature in books. So they still well, I say that to annoy them. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, I wanted to have an Indian policeman as my main protagonist because I felt I would be able to write that character more convincingly, obviously being Indian. Um, I ended up picking a Sikh, even though I'm not Sikh, because when you're writing a crime series, your detective must be memorable. Like, people must read him once and then know him well, like he's your friend or your uncle or your boss. His actual character and the kind of adventures he has, and well, not adventures, but you know, the conversations he has with his wife and that sort of experience, definitely I tap my relatives all the time. But they're quite funny, they don't recognize themselves. Um, they just think, I don't know why. In fact, they recognize each other. So my auntie will say, so you wrote that about your other auntie. And I'll be like, it's all of you. It's all of you. Yeah, so usually what I do is I go and buy a vast array of um, fiction and non-fiction books about the place that I'm going to write about. And I need everything that I can. Um, and then when I feel that I've got a sense of the place plus my past visit, then I'll go and spend a few weeks there. Then I'll come back and I'll write. Then I'll go back again to see whether what I've written reflects the reality of that place. Uh, my next one, my next one is theoretically set in London. Although, funnily enough, maybe because I've become so comfortable with writing him set in Asia, I'm struggling with that book right now. So I don't know whether it's going to be possible. Um, but yes, I would like to take him to the. Oh, I think it's a fantastic thing. I mean, look at the number of books. I mean, I've written 44 books and. Apparently there are some other authors out there because you seem to have thousands. Um, I, I like the way it generates interest in the public for books. You know, it gives them a reason to go and buy a book, a place to go and buy a book, a bunch of events that they can enjoy. Um, yeah, no, no, I think it's an excellent idea and you guys seem to execute it beautifully.